Rachmaninoff's Rhapsody on a Theme of Paganini is so fun to deconstruct because there's so much going on in there and it goes by so quickly. Another spectacular thing about this, I'll just call it concerto, is the 18th variation. Yeah, the 18th variation is special, but uh, it's so beautiful. Everybody who hears it, the moment that they, they hear it, they're like, oh, you know, and it's been uh, co-opted by Hollywood in dozens of movies. So let's just take the simplest part of that theme. And let's even take away the first note. So we just have this. So that happens to be an A minor. So let's change that from uh, A minor to uh, D flat. We're going to just move it up a few keys. It's very similar, we can hear the same thing. And let's just change it from minor to major. So now we're gonna turn it upside down and add some harmony. And that's genius. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, th that is where you say, Okay, Rachmaninoff wrote incredibly beautiful melodies, maybe at a time in the 20th century when composers were shying away from writing beautiful melodies. And, and you know, some composers would look down on Rachmaninoff like, why are you writing these pretty tunes? I mean, I mean, you know, that's not what music's about today. Uh, I mean, this piece was written after Rhapsody in Blue, you know, and, and, and 20th century was going in a different direction. But uh, he was absolutely steadfast that this is the music he wanted to write. And then you realize this kind of incredible organ organizational genius behind it all, and it makes it so satisfying. I was going to ask, yeah, what is it like to play that piece overall, and when you get to that 18th variation, do you just sort of breathe? Yeah, I kind of just melt into it. It's, it's a special moment, uh, and it is the third of three slower variations. It, it isn't a slow movement per se, but it kind of has that, that function that there's a lot of high energy in the beginning and a lot of high energy at the end, and this is where the whole thing, your heartbeat slows down. And this is the culmination of it, getting to the 18th variation. And when it's over, uh, the orchestra immediately picks up the tempo, the piano comes in imitating a, a violinist playing piz pizzicato, and, and then we're off to the races. And uh, although there's many, many, many more pages of music, it all goes by really fast at that point, <laughs> and then before you know it, you're at the end. I love the two variations that come right after that one. Yeah. The 19th yeah. and 20th. Well, I love, the, I love the whole idea of this. I mean, it really is meant to sound like a violinist is, is furiously plucking. Uh, and then you have this. which has this idea of, you know, like a, a defiant gesture almost, and, you know, we're, we're really back, and it's exciting, and, and no apologies, and no holds barred. At the very end, Dies Irae is very present. Yeah. But there's a whimsical ending to the piece, too. Where do you think we end up with this? It, it's so great, because there is a running joke that Rachmaninoff signed off so many of his virtuoso pieces with his own name. So, like, in, in the second piano concerto, and we just say, rock, on and off. And then the third piano concerto. <laughs> it's exactly the same rhythm, it's just <laughs> different notes. And so this is really very different because Rachmaninoff really knew how to write an ending. And in this case, he still really knew how to write an ending. The usual cascade of chords that you would expect and alternating hand technique and all the brilliant kind of concerto writing you would expect. And then suddenly he ends with this very simple cadence, and you hear that little hint of Paganini at the end. And it's kind of like he's winking at you, you know? It's like, huh, puff of smoke, done. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, thank you so much. That was great. Thanks, Melissa.